Welcome back to Question Period. Well, the mayor of Winnipeg is calling for her to resign. NDP leadership candidate Charlie Angus says Senator Lynn Bayek is unfit for office, but the conservative senator is not backing down from her latest controversy. In a letter posted on her Senate website, Senator Bayek suggested that Canada's Aboriginals ought to give up their status cards, saying, and I'll quote her, None of us are leaving, so let's stop the guilt and the blame and find a way to live and share together. Trade your status card for a Canadian citizenship. Uh, Senator Bayak, if you're watching, Canada's Indigenous peoples are citizens. They have passports. Anyway, Senator Bayak was already in trouble for claiming back in April that residential schools had some positive aspects. She's since defended that view. Maybe she should read the Truth and Reconciliation Commission on that one. Should she be kicked out of the Conservative caucus? For more on that, I'm joined now by Senator Patrick Brazo. He was once kicked out of the caucus, but you're back. How are you, sir? I'm very good, thank you. Well, you were kicked out of caucus for, well, things that eventually proved uh, not to be you are not charged with anything. Should Lynn Bayak be kicked out of caucus? Well, look, uh, I don't think that it's up to me to decide uh, what uh, should happen to her in, ter in terms of uh, either being kicked out of caucus or resigning from her seat. Uh, but having said that, I mean, uh, obviously, I unequivocally uh, disagree with her comments. I think that her comments are, were disgusting. Uh, I don't know uh, Senator Bayak all that well because uh, she, you know, she was appointed uh, right before I was kicked out of uh, that Conservative caucus. Uh, but her comments uh, were disgusting. And uh, but having said that, uh, you know, there's, there's, free, there's freedom of speech, and yeah. she's entitled to an opinion. Right. But the only thing is that uh, it's just that it's an opinion, and it's unfortunate. You call them disgusting. Now the question is, are, this is a pretty fraught time, as you know. Is it? Are they racist comments or not? Well, it's saying that a Aboriginal people aren't citizens. It's not true. Well, it's not true. Not only are we Canadians first, but we're also first Canadians. Uh, and so uh, obviously that comment uh, wasn't uh, based in fact. And noth nothing that she has said with respect to Aboriginal issues uh, are based in fact. It's just a personal opinion. And it's unfortunate. But having said that, there are people who have fought wars and, and died so that we could have certain freedoms. But obviously she's uh, taking advantage of that, of, uh, of that freedom. And Luckily, the majority of Canadians don't support what comes out of her mouth. Well, what does it say? You're an independent senator. What does it say that she's still a conservative senator? Well, that's up for the conservative leadership, uh, uh, Andrew Scheer and uh, Senator Smith, to, to, to decide upon her fate. Senator Mike Duffy is suing the Senate for $8 million for damages to his reputation. Well, you were also subjected to uh, getting kicked out. Your wages were garnished. You, you, are you considering suing as well? Is that an action you might consider because of what happened to you? Well, look, uh, I'm not a lawyer, obviously. I mean, that's in the hands of, of my lawyers. But, uh, you know, these are difficult issues. And uh, I've said that I'd look at uh, every opportunity or a possibility to see what I could do to, to restore the good name that I had. Uh, because at the end of the day, I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, and I've always maintained that. And, and that's a fact. Uh, but so hang so on, it's in the hands of your lawyers. So you've spoken to your lawyers about su possibly suing the Senate. Well, the key is, is not only to have lawyers in these types of cases that, are, that, that know the law and uh, are experts in the law, but also that have a very good understanding of the politics. And because at the end of the day, everything uh, that happened to, to myself in, in particular and, and some of my other colleagues uh, was all political. Okay, but let me just slow down. You've talked, so you're watching the Duffy case closely. I've always, I've always have. And you're watching the Duffy case now that he's suing again. You've spoken to your lawyers about maybe we should follow a, the similar course of action, considering the legal and the political elements. But it, fair, fair to say you're investigating that possibility. I have not closed any doors on anything. You say it's all political. What is, just clarify. Nothing's changed for you. You're back as a, you're an independent senator now. All the things about the billing and that you lost your wages, uh, had nothing's changed for you right now? Uh, absolute nothing has changed. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm, I'm doing exactly um, now what I was told that I was not able to do back in 2012. So why were there every char any charges in the first place? In other words, all the issue about your travel and how you bill and, this, and the residences, all that stuff that became the cornerstone of this entire Senate scandal that they took your wages for, 
Now you've gone back as an independent senator, and it's all exactly the same? Like nothing's changed? Well, the only thing that's changed is that uh, the Senate has um, uh, now used four criteria to determine where the primary residence is. And what's important to note is that I was the test case. I right. was the, the person who brought on all the information, like a driver's license, a health card, uh, where I receive uh, my income taxes, where I'm registered to all vote federally. That, right? uh, and, and these are the criteria that now the Senate you, you, you utilizes. So all the things that, that when you lost your job, and you went through all that, because of this residency and this billing, all that now is the standard procedure. So it's the same as it was than now, except the only difference is your reputation's been trashed. It's, it certainly has. So it was all political and not administrative, that's for sure. Before I let you go, a lot of people are seeing you, and you know, you've had a pretty controversial past, as you know, with the Senate. Then, of course, there's a, a, a lot of people will look at the charges, the assault charges that have been brought against you. Um, and then you've been very candid, frankly, about what happened since then. The suicide attempt, where you cut your own throat. What's it like to kind of back as an independent senator after all that you've been through, and including near-death experience? Well, look, uh, it's, it's certainly great to be here. I mean, I'm, I'm thankful for every day that I'm, I'm able to wake up. Uh, you know, I went through some very challenging times and tough personal times, but uh, I'm moving beyond that now. I'm, uh, I'm healthy. I started working out again. And, uh, you know, as a First Nations person, uh, you know, we're fighters. And uh, that's what uh, every single person needs to do in life is fight because uh, nobody hands you anything on a silver platter. You've got to fight for it. And you're back to work? Back to work, yes. Looking Senator forward to Brazo, it. Senator Brazo, it's good to have you on the program. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.